Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I invite you to stand as you are able for the singing of the national anthem and to remain standing for the invocation. Please remain standing. Father Christopher Collins serves as assistant to the president for mission and identity for St. Louis University. I invite Father Collins to offer the invocation. Thank you very much and welcome. Let's take a moment in great gratitude for this chance to be together to celebrate the, the gifts and the accomplishments and the great desires that our graduates have for their futures. And, and above all, just to let uh, the, our, our own hearts be filled with that gratitude to be together. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you have given to us. We thank you for creating us out of love and for love. We thank you for the gifts that you have given to our graduates and all those who have supported them and our faculty and staff and their families and loved ones. And we just ask you to let this moment be one of, of renewal and great joy and great hope for each one of our futures and for our region. We pray all this in your name. Amen.
Thank you, Father. Family members, loved ones, friends, guests, welcome to the St. Louis University School of Law 2019 hooding ceremony. Uh, I'm sorry, please be seated. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, welcome to the 2019 hooding ceremony. On behalf of the class of 2019 and the faculty and staff of the School of Law, I thank you very much for taking the time to join us in the celebration this afternoon. The School of Law hooding ceremony is always such a wonderful experience as we celebrate the terrific accomplishments of our graduate, graduates, and we celebrate and anticipate with great expectations the tremendous possibilities of tomorrow. Uh, this class is a special class, and this year is a special year as 2018-2019 marks the 175th anniversary since law classes were first offered at SLU, making this our Dodron's Bicentennial year. I had to look that word up, but it, it is our Dodron's Bicentennial, I assure you. Uh, I'm William Johnson. It's my honor and my privilege to serve this remarkable law school community as dean, and I know I speak for the staff and the faculty when I say what a pleasure it has been to engage with this group of graduates over the past, in most cases, three years. I truly am very, very proud of this class. It gives me a deep sense of both pride and joy to have gotten to know and to have worked with such a fine group of women and men who have worked very, very hard over the past three years, have maintained high standards of excellence, have demonstrated integrity consistently, and importantly, have exemplified the Jesuit identity and, and mission by consistently finding ways to be women and men of service for and with others. I know you are also proud of your graduate, as you certainly should be, and I have no doubt that our graduates feel deep pride in what this day represents for each of them. It is the culmination of very hard work, dedication, and even some sacrifice, and it is an important milestone event that marks entry into the legal profession. There's another milestone event coming at the end of July. We're not going to stress about that today. Uh, I want to share with you something that I think is important for us to pause and, and consider from time to time, and that is pride in this profession. I am proud to be a lawyer. And dear graduates, I sincerely hope you also feel a deep sense of pride, not only on what you have accomplished, but this profession that you're about to enter today and throughout your career. Lawyers sometimes get beat up a little bit. There are a lot of lawyer jokes, some of them funny, uh, some, of them, some of them not. Um, we shouldn't take ourselves too seriously. It's, it's, go it's good to have a sense of humility, uh, for sure. And as with any group, there are members of the legal profession who don't always set the best example or have a particularly high standard when it comes to integrity or decency. That, that is true. But the profession as a whole is a noble profession, and I am very proud of what we are all called to do. <laughs> Judges and lawyers are nothing less than the guardians of the rule of law and the defenders of civil rights and civil liberties. I assume most, if not all of you, are familiar with the following uh, Shakespearean quote. The first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. That's from Shakespeare's Henry VI, uh, and it's a, a well-known quote. You can, I've seen coffee cups with the saying on the side of the cup. I've seen t-shirts with it print, printed boldly on the front of the shirt. You can buy a poster. It's easy to hear or see that quote and conclude, my goodness, even Shakespeare didn't like lawyers. It's actually not the whole truth. The context matters. This quote is taken out of context quite a bit. But in the scene where this quote is found, there's a character, uh, Jack Cade, who is planning to overthrow the crown and assume power. Two other characters, Smith and Dick the Butcher, are his co-conspirators. Jack Cade makes a series of ridiculous claims about his apparent invincibility. He describes a utopian world under his benevolent but dictatorial rule. And in his excitement while listening, the murderous, violent character who has earned the nickname Dick the Butcher cries, the first thing we'll do, let's kill all the lawyers. These are wicked men. They have dastardly plans. The lawyers stand in the way. 
As Justice Stevens wrote in a footnote in his dissenting opinion in the 1985 Walters decision in reference to this quote, Shakespeare insightfully realized that disposing of lawyers is a step in the direction of a totalitarian form of government. I agree. The special training, knowledge, and skills that lawyers and judges possess make them critical to maintaining and protecting the rule of law. It's why in authoritarian states around the world, lawyers and judges are routinely harassed and imprisoned, sometimes even killed, as authoritarian governments seek greater control and power or seek to trample on fundamental human rights or civil liberties. Lawyers stand in the way. So our graduates will soon share with their colleagues in the law a unique and remarkable responsibility, a responsibility for the American legal system, for democratic principles, and for the rule of law. It truly is an awesome responsibility. It's also a tremendous privilege, and it's heavy. But I know you're ready. I know you're prepared. You're ready in part because of your intellect, your hard work, you're ready in part because of the dedication of an incredible staff utterly committed to your success. And you're ready in part because of the excellence of our teaching faculty. Our law school has always placed an emphasis on the importance of excellence in teaching. We take this very seriously. And we are blessed with outstanding teachers. The graduating class has a long tradition of selecting an outstanding teacher as the faculty member of the year. More recently, Graduating classes have also selected an adjunct professor to be recognized as adjunct fa faculty member of the year. Our adjunct faculty members are lawyers and judges who enhance and enrich our curriculum and keep us connected with the bench and bar in important and valuable ways. Before we get to the faculty member of the year who will deliver brief remarks, I would like to recognize the teacher the graduating class chose as adjunct faculty member of the year. For the second year in a row, the graduating class has selected Thomas Ray, Tom, would you please stand? <laughs> Mr. Ray is Senior Litigation Counsel for the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of Missouri. His litigation practice focuses on complex, violent criminal prosecutions with particular emphasis on crimes resulting in death and unsolved cold case investigations. Seth Adam Monero, National Violent Crimes and Narcotics Coordinator with the Executive Office for U.S. Attorneys, has described Mr. Ray as one of the best prosecutors in the entire United States Attorney's Office's anti-violence community. That's high praise. Mr. Ray has been kind enough and generous enough with his time to serve as an adjunct professor uh, at SLU Law, which he has done since 2010. He's also a Department of Justice legal education instructor, a water polo goalkeeper coach, and a nationally licensed soccer coach. Uh, needless to say, he keeps very, very busy. Uh, Mr. Ray is a graduate of Wash U School of Law and earned his undergraduate degree from Boston College and attended SLU High, both great Jesuit institutions. Congratulations, Tom. Thank you for your dedication to our students. We now turn to Dr. Anders Walker, the Lily Myers Professor of Law and Associate Dean for Research and Engagement, whom the graduating class has selected to be faculty member of the year. Now, being recognized as the teacher of the year is a high point of a teacher's career. I have no doubt. I can't attest to that from personal experience, but I'm certain it must be terrific. Uh, Professor Anders Walker has enjoy, enjoy, enjoyed that distinction now six times, uh, including each of the last three years in a row. He loves to teach, and he is very, very good at it. Anders graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Wesleyan University in 1994, where he majored in history. He went on to earn his JD, as well as a master's degree in history from Duke in 1998. He was a law clerk for a federal judge in Texas after graduating from law school, and then went on to complete a PhD at Yale University in 2003 while holding fellowships at Yale and New York University. He joined the SLU Law faculty in 2006. He teaches courses in criminal law, 
American legal history and constitutional law, as well as a variety of very popular seminars. In addition to being a truly gifted teacher, he is an impressive and productive scholar. He's the author of two books, including The Burning House, Jim Crow and the Making of Modern America, which was published uh, recently by Yale University Press, as well as 40 articles, essays, reviews, and other publications, and he's given literally dozens of scholarly presentations. Uh, when I arrived in St. Louis seven years ago, he was one of the first faculty members I met, and you cannot help but like him immediately. Uh, when I became dean, I asked Professor Walker to serve as the associate dean for research and engagement, and he agreed, and he's done exceptional work in that role. Ordinarily, it would mean a reduced teaching load to account for the additional administrative responsibilities. He refused a reduced teaching load because he loves to teach so much. I agreed because he is so very good at it. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Anders Walker. You dreamed it all ever since you were young. Now we say congratulations. You worked so hard, you forgot how to vacation. People hating say you changed, but look, you made it. Yes, you made it. Those are the words of Austin Richard Post, a 19th century poet, not to be confused with Post Malone, <laughs> whose single congratulations is the first song on my playlist dedicated to you. The SLU Law Class of 2019, available on Spotify, Apple Music. Just follow the link on my Twitter feed, please. There are some fist-pumping dance tracks, slow jams for late-night mindfulness sessions, nine songs to sum up the past three years. And what a three years it has been. I had about 93 of you for criminal law in the fall of 2016, and I remember looking out over the room thinking, here we go again, another cadre of law students who just want to have a good time. How am I going to make this material interesting? Then in November, there was an election, and suddenly it got really interesting. Every week, new legal issues Grab the headlines. Why do we have an electoral college? What is the 25th Amendment? What is the scope of executive power? These are questions that used to bore people to tears. What is an impeachable offense? Is the payment of $150,000 to an adult entertainer a campaign finance contribution? And what, if anything, did Brett Kavanaugh's calendars really prove? This has been the best three years of law teaching since Southern Secession, <laughs> which raised a lot of legal issues, and maybe the founding. And I know what you're thinking, well, being a law professor is probably exciting and glamorous. We get to appear on Channel 5, we get interviewed on KMOX, and once a year we put on our medieval outfits and walk down the aisle here at Scheifetz like the Grammys. In reality, though, it's actually quite dull. Same cases, same facts, same issues, same holdings, year in and year out. But not this class. You did the work, you did the reading, most of the reading. It looked like you did the reading. <laughs> and you had a sense of humor, which I appreciate. We laughed at the Democrats. We laughed at the Republicans. The only thing we didn't laugh at is the amount of Bud Light I consume at law school events. <laughs> That's no laughing matter. It's also not a problem. It's a solution to much deeper problems that I have <laughs> that I don't have time to deal with right now. You came to law school at a moment when law became so interesting that even Kim Kardashian decided she wanted to become a lawyer. She doesn't need the money. She has 138 million followers on Instagram. I have 400 followers on Twitter. <laughs> Companies will pay her huge amounts of money just to take pictures of herself with their products. 
I called her agent to see if perhaps Miss Kardashian would take a picture of herself reading my book, <laughs> The Burning House. They said she'd be glad to, it cost 400. I said $400? No, $400,000. That's what she makes per post. Uh, what about Kylie or Kendall? That's 250. Even Scott Disick, the do-nothing dad of Courtney's three children, charges $15,000 per Instagram post. And I thought he was a loser. <laughs> but despite all this money, Kim Kardashian wants to be a lawyer, which is a testament to how interesting the profession is or has become. Not all professions have fared as well. Over the past three years, as law has trended, we've seen the collapse of another once noble profession, journalism. Uh, once upon a time, people went to school to be a journalist, including Mizzou. Today, anyone with an iPhone is a journalist. Be glad that not everyone with an iPhone can be a lawyer. Even Kim Kardashian, a master of the iPhone, has to take the bar exam. I've got $5 riding on her failing the bar exam. And in most states, except for California, which is crazy, she would also have to get a JD. So be glad you're in Missouri. You made the right choice. Law is a great profession. One of the last great professions, along with medicine. Next time you see a doctor, remind them in the 18th century, when they were treating people with leeches, i.e. literally putting leeches on people to treat them, lawyers were drafting the Constitution. Take that. <laughs> you will have an opportunity to face down the med students on Saturday at graduation. You're not graduating today. I hope you didn't tell your friends and family that this is law school graduation. This is hooding, where you receive your hood, which is part of your academic regalia, which in medieval times, students at Oxford wore because it rained a lot in England. On Saturday, you will actually graduate, and the president will ask you all to stand up and face the med students. This happens every year. Hopefully, you'll be there, because they bring a big crowd. They're all required to attend. We need to teach them who's the boss around here. After that, we'll retire to the pavilion at Scott Hall for a reception, and I'll raise a glass, or more likely, a bottle of Bud Light in your honor. Thank you. Thank you, Anders. I considered giving a warning before his talk, I opted not to. I will have to reconsider that for next year. It, it's fun to get a little taste of what the students are subjected to in your classroom. Thank you very much, Dr. Walker. Our law school has a truly exceptional student body. Um, over the last uh, two and a half years uh, since assuming this role, I've heard consistently from our alumni and from legal employers uh, and from bar leaders um, who hire or otherwise engage with our students that SLU Law students really do enjoy a particularly strong reputation. Um, and, and this has lots of different sort of components. They have a reputation for hard work and reliability, something that I've certainly seen over and over uh, myself as well. Uh, they're known to be strong writers, a real testament to my outstanding colleagues who teach them the mechanics, the rules, and the art of legal research and writing. Um, they are also practical, and they have good judgment, uh, and that is something that is tremendously valuable uh, to your clients. Um, they are also ethical and have great integrity, and that, when I hear it, gives me a particular sense of pride. Uh, this feedback that I've received over and over and over again has reinforced what the faculty, staff, and I see every day, the hard work, the dedication, and standards of, of excellence. Now, each year at this time, we recognize one student who has so excelled in his or her academics as to have earned the title valedictorian. And the valedictorian for the class of 2019 is Maggie Strong. <laughs> Maggie was born and raised in California. She attended Northwestern University, where she earned her Bachelor of Arts in cello performance in 2008. 
She then earned a Master of Music degree from the Peabody Institute at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore in 2012. After completing her bachelor's and master's degrees, Maggie was a professional cellist, teaching and performing in various ensembles, including the National Symphony and the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra, until she began law school in the fall 2016 semester. During law school, Maggie was a staff member of the St. Louis University Law Journal, uh, her second and third years. She also has volunteered for various animal advocacy organizations and has played cello for the naturalization ceremonies held at the School of Law. Maggie and her husband welcomed their first child, Sarah, six months ago in December. After graduate. <laughs> After graduation, uh, Maggie will move to Los Angeles to work as an associate with Hill, Fair and Burl, practicing litigation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Maggie Strong. Thank you, Dean Johnson. In a recent job interview, a puzzled attorney asked me why, oh why, did I want to be a lawyer when I could be a musician? To her, as to many people, a musician's life seemed just as joyous and delightful as the music she produces. I responded, as I always do, by saying that I loved being a musician, but that I was ready for something new and more intellectually stimulating. What I did not explain is that playing the cello had become my cubicle. I practiced endless hours without taking breaks. I beat myself up over every little mistake. I injured my arm from overworking. At some point, I had lost my passion for music, and I had stopped prioritizing my overall health and well-being. So when I sought a clean slate with law school, I was determined not to repeat my mistakes. Since I knew there was a point of diminishing returns, a point beyond which my work would suffer, I sought to find that sweet spot between sleeping and studying. I strived to take care of myself. This included running the stairs with Tariq and Drew at the break during property, our 1L year. I also began meditating daily. Now, I realize I'm preaching to the choir, but as many of you know, I love giving unsolicited advice. I'm just excited to start charging people for it. But again, I am preaching to the choir because every graduate on this stage has already figured out, or seated in front of me, rather, um, you guys as well, has already figured out their own sweet spot. You've learned how to take care of yourselves and to thrive in law school. You can endure a power hose of information while keeping your cool. Otherwise, you would not be here today, graduates of SLU Law. Still, as we venture into our legal careers, greater challenges and heavier workloads await us. We will also bear the immense responsibility of having clients who desperately need our help. And for many of us, our personal lives will also become increasingly rich and demanding as our family lives grow. On that note, I'd like to thank Mary Pat, Dean of Career Services, for encouraging me to have a baby this past year. I have to say, Mary Pat, you really undersold the difficulty of having a baby in law school. <laughs> I actually still can't decide what was more painful, the four-hour exam that I took for Professor Bodie's class on the day I gave birth, or the act of childbirth itself. <laughs> having a baby has taught me that caring for your physical and mental well-being requires adaptability and commitment. And so, as life tugs at us in every direction, Let's maintain our sweet spot and prioritize our health and happiness. Just as I was unable to make beautiful music when I was physically and mentally stressed, regardless of how many hours I practiced, we cannot reach our potential as counselors and advocates if we do not first and foremost tend to ourselves. And when we make that choice to foster our souls, to sleep, and to be kind to ourselves, then we will approach our work with focus, creativity, 
and humanity. By leading balanced lives, we will enjoy our work, and our work will be better. I am in awe of the collective determination, intelligence, and talent that is sitting in front of me. Even more importantly, I am blown away by the kindness that you all possess. We will always share the bond of having experienced law school together. Let's continue to support one another in forging exciting and meaningful careers and spiritually fulfilling lives. And finally, what did the judge say when the skunk was on trial? Odor in the court. There we go. Thank you, Maggie, and well done. Good advice. Okay joke. No, it's funny. Now, uh, the moment has arrived to recognize our graduates at this special hooding ceremony. Uh, the placing of the purple, blue, and white hood on each graduate is the symbolic recognition of completion of the requirements for the Juris Doctor degree or the Master of Laws in Health Law or Master of Laws in American Law for Foreign Lawyers degrees. The color purple is for law as a discipline, and the colors blue and white are for St. Louis University. The graduates will be hooded by members of the law faculty and board of trustees. Let's proceed. Hermine Udu Dotafai. <laughs> Zhang Shi. Anna R. Anderson. John S. Applebaum. Tyler Ash. H. Paul Balisteri. <laughs> Matthew Buzz Stephen Baumer. <laughs> Laura Morgan Beckering. Samuel Emmett Beffa. <laughs> Madhav Yogeshkumar Bhatt. <laughs> David Edward Bird. Mary Bridget Boyle. <laughs> Laura Sarah Bozarth. <laughs> Kendra Jasmine Anastasia Brown. Aramis Owens Bryant. <laughs> 
Zachary T. Buckheit. <laughs> Miranda M. Bukowski. James Gregory Callahan IV. Mackenzie David Callanan. Omar D. Cancel Rios. Danielle Marie Carta. Alexandra Chrysula Carey. Ikenna Richard Carrington. Deshaun Ray Kaysen. Bradley J. Chapman. Jose Manuel Claro Gomez. Tyson Daniel Cole. Gretchen Marie Cox. Jeffrey W. Crabtree. Megan A. Crow. Claudia Vanessa Kubias. Caroline Elizabeth Diker. Miranda R. De Leon. Isaac E. Dodd III. Kristen E. Austin Doyle. Lauren Elizabeth Dressel. Brendan J. Duffner. Timothy James Early, Jr. Henry, excuse me, Henry Nicholas Eicher II. Riley Garrett Fuel. Katie Mary Finnegan. <laughs> Donald W. Folk.
Carter Dean Gage. Daniel James Gerwitz. Ian C. Gilbert. Emily Lynn Gokey. Mia Tani Griffin. Caitlin Eleanor Gromka Murphy. Paula Gutierrez. Brandon Michael Hall. Abigail J Joy Halliday. Monica Ray Heater. Jackson B. Hedges. Lindy A. Henry. Lauren Elizabeth Herbig. Aida Horenda. Thomas Franklin Herring IV. Adam Blake Holder. Martin Luther Hutchins, Jr. Amanda Louise Hudson. Laura Colette Jurassic. Brandy Lynn Johnson. Charlotte Alyssa Johnston. Sarah Elizabeth Jones. Sonia Ann Kalafifitil. Peter Conlin Duffield Kempf. Shannon Camille King. Colleen A. Kinsey. Tara M. Knowlton.
Cade A. Custer. Samantha Gail Coldenhoven. Sierra Nicole Lanterman. David Andrew Large. Audrey Nicole Larson. Crystal N. Lewis. Courtney Ann Lindbeck. Brianna Nicole Lackridge. David E. F. Lodeke. Amina Yasmin Medina. Laura Kathleen Marsh. Rachel V. Martin. Brian J. Matthews. Alexander James McWigan. Melissa A. McLaughlin. Catherine G. McWhorter. Jared C. Meyer. Miles Scott Monson. Sophia Clara Mor Morletta. Sarah Walker Morgan. Andrew W. Morrow. Taylor L. Morthland. Dane Christian Nelson. Jonathan Cole Newkirk. Brandon Rob Niepater. Amitis Nuhi.
Christina Brugan Diaz O'Keefe. Sean Jonathan Oliveira. Samantha Joanne Orlowski. Lauren Elise Pear. Abby Nicole Palusek. Melissa Marie Piper. Victoria L. Holvote. Shane T. Porter. Anthony C. Pritchett. Katie E. Prohaska. Edward John Ratatick III. Catherine Renee Redmond. Caroline N. Renner. Caitlin Rose Rich. Michelle Mai Rodman. Morgan Elizabeth Rorig. Cole W. Rosenblum. Michael James Rusher. Anthony William Sabat. Brian Daniel Sableman. Lena M. Salome. Alexander Gregory Salazar. Christopher Paul Sandifer. Stephen M. Scannell. Carissa Marie Schmidt. John K. Scott. River Tane Scott.
Brittany Janae Shaw. Kale Z. Smith. Kristen J. Smith. Victor V. Smith. Alexis N. Smizer. Paige Sparks. <laughs> Drew R. Spindler. Lewis Charles Spinner II. <laughs> Brian T. Stakowski. Jarrett Matthew Stein. <laughs> Margaret Hummel Strong. Markel Rayleigh Schulteis Studeman. Joshua Brian Swires. Rose Marie Tanner. Edward Carson Theobald II. Jerome Levy Tamachek. <laughs> Tyler A. Thompson. <laughs> Zachary W. Tobin. Stephen Michael Trottier. Tyler Joseph Urish. Matthew A. Victorio. Amanda A. Walker. Benjamin Michael Walker. Crystal Marie Wang. David Wasserman. <laughs> 
Sarah Ann Weimer. Nicole Elizabeth Wemhoff. Matthew James Williams. And congratulations to all of our graduates. Graduates, please stand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friends, I present to you the members of the 2019 graduating class of St. Louis University School of Law. Please be seated. It, it is now my privilege and my pleasure to introduce you to our Dodron's Bicentennial graduation speaker, Judge Donald G. Wilkerson. Judge Wilkerson was appointed U.S. Magistrate Judge on January 4th, 2005. Uh, Judge Wilkerson, a native of East St. Louis, was the first African-American appointed to the bench in the Southern District of Illinois. He received his Bachelor of Science degree from Illinois State University in 1973. He received a Master's degree in Education from Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville in 1978. He attended the evening program at SLU Law where he earned his Juris Doctorate degree with honors in 1993. Judge Wilkerson started his legal career at the Thompson Mitchell, now Thompson Coburn law firm in, in St. Louis. He later worked at the Stoller Partnership Law Firm in St. Louis. And in 1995, he joined the U.S. Attorney's Office in St. Louis, where he served as an assistant U.S. Attorney until his appointment to the bench. Judge Wilkerson has taught criminal sentencing law at Southern Illinois University School of Law in Carbondale, and has been an adjunct professor at Washington University School of Law, teaching in their trial clinic for more than 20 years. Prior to beginning his legal career, Judge Wilkerson taught and coached in the East St. Louis, Illinois public schools for 17 years. Judge Wilkerson retired in January of 20, uh, 2019, but a true man of service, he continues to serve the citizens of Southern Illinois as a recall magistrate judge. I know that you face demands on your time, Judge. You honor us with your presence here. Thank you for being here. Please help me welcome Judge Donald G. Wilkerson. Uh, good afternoon. When uh, Dean Barris asked me and Dean Johnson if I would speak, they didn't tell me that I was going to have to follow these other speakers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> come on. Uh, the Dean is quoting Shakespeare <laughs> by memory, you know. <laughs> Professor Walker, who's going to give him his tea? He, Come on, TV show for Professor Walker. <laughs> and and Miss Strong, I did not have a baby. So how can I beat that? I can't beat that. <laughs> Greetings and good afternoon, graduates and family and friends of graduates. Dean Johnson, faculty, staff, my lovely wife Donna is somewhere here in the crowd. And all of you others in attendance or who are watching the live stream, congratulate me. 
join me in congratulating these graduates. Grad I'm not here today to lecture. I'm only here to remind you graduates of things you already know. This is much too glorious a day to be taken up with long speeches by me. Uh, Dean Barris told me 10 minutes and I'm gonna stick to it. I promise you short remarks. People who know me are gonna find that remarkable in itself because I'm a school teacher, I'm a lawyer, and a wannabe preacher. But if you want longer remarks, you're gonna to have to buy me a beer. And I'm not a Bud Light man, Professor, I'm sorry. I like Mexican beer. And I hope, yeah, Modelo, that's right. I hope we don't get a tariff on that. That would be a problem. <laughs> I do wanna tell you that I've spoken for a living since 1975. I've spoken to classrooms of students at every level from fourth grade to law school. I've spoken to professional groups of educators, police officials, lawyers. Sometimes these gatherings have numbered in the hundreds. I've tried lawsuits trying to convince juries that my position was correct. I've argued in front of courts of appeal. And in all these experiences, I was seldom nervous. I got a few nerves this afternoon because I am ever so grateful to St. Louis University School of Law because every opportunity that has ever come my way in law is because of my association with this law school. I have taught a small trial class group at Washington University for over 20 years and I always tell my students to get to the point. So here's the point, humility, community, legacy. I'm not going to ask you to do what I did when I taught fourth grade. I'd say repeat after me. But humility, community, and legacy. Let's take humility first. I'm saying I, but I mean you too. I'm not as smart as I think I am. I'm not as funny as I think I am. I'm not as good looking as I think I am. I'm not as charming as I think I am. I could go on and on, but you get the point. Humility is a quality you need not to just become a good lawyer, but to become a good person. And by the way, you learned most of these lessons when you were 10, 12 years old in Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, Brownies, Sunday school, athletic teams. Rely on what you know. There, there's an old saying about right and wrong, which is, if you have to ask the question, you already know the answer. The bottom line is, you don't have to be a jerk to be a good lawyer. I have no idea what you graduates intend to do with your law degree. Some of you will practice law, others of you will not. But if you practice law, know that people are not coming to you for grins and giggles because you're smart, good looking, or charming. They're coming to you because they have a problem. And they deserve your best efforts. And most of all, they deserve your honesty. Plaintiff's attorneys, if your case is not the lottery, tell your client. Defense attorneys, if your client has exposure, don't be so worried that you're gonna get fired that you won't tell your clients the truth. Humility means letting go of you and not thinking much about yourself. In the legal setting, it means putting your client's needs before your own. Second, community. What do I mean? We have the international community, the national community, the local community. I'm not talking about any of those communities today talking about the legal community. I was a prosecutor in the U.S. Attorney's Office for 10 years in St. Louis, and I like to think that I knew every criminal defense attorney within 150 miles. And if I didn't know them, or if I hadn't heard about them, they weren't on the radar. And most importantly, I knew the reputation. 
I knew who would fight for their client. I knew who wouldn't fight for their client. If you're going to be a bankruptcy lawyer and a member of the bankruptcy legal community, you'll know the bankruptcy bar. If you're a plaintiff's attorney or a defense attorney, you'll know the civil law legal community and you'll know the civil bar. And if you're in patent law, you know the, it goes on and on and on. And again, I don't know what geographic area you'll find yourself in. I don't know if you're going to be here in St. Louis or if you'll be in California or New York or Idaho. I know that you will be a member of that local legal community and your reputation is all you have. I'm not going to bore you with war stories, but I'm going to tell you one real quick, without details, without naming names. As a judge, I did many mediations. During the mediations, the lawyers would appear with their clients, and I'd try to help parties reach a settlement of their dispute. During a mediation in 2005, where were some of you guys in kindergarten in 2005? In 2005, during one of these mediations, I had a lawyer lie to me. And he didn't lie to me to help his client. He lied to me to get an extra $5,000 on his fee. That's not a good thing to lie to a federal judge. And the fact that I'm still talking about it 14 years later <laughs> lets you know I don't think it was a good thing. But I let it go, don't you think? Well, maybe next year. And by the way, that lawyer came back a few times. It wasn't his last rodeo. He saw me again, and he was on my radar. Guard your reputation in the legal community. Next and lastly, legacy. I know this is crazy for me to be talking to you on your graduation day about legacy, but Professor Weinberger and I were talking about taking his property class 30 years ago and how it just goes by so fast. But, and I'm gonna take a point of privilege because there's so much pride in this room today and everybody is so happy, I'm gonna take a point of personal privilege and, and talk about my legacy just a bit. I remember my acceptance letter from this law school. It congratulated me on being accepted and told me that I would meet other students like myself who were somewhat mature. That was my first example of legal nuance. I'm like, just get it over with and call me old. I get it. I remember the reception for incoming students at the couple's house on campus in 1989 and how nervous I was. I remember coming out of my first torts exam in December of that year. The torts exam was at night. We got out at 10 o'clock and it was a raging snowstorm. I couldn't even see out on Lindell. I couldn't even see my car. I went over to the car and I put my key in and broke the key off in the lock. And I had to call a locksmith and I remember getting home 12, 30, 1 o'clock that night, finally going to sleep, having to get up to go to work the next morning. These are the things I remember. I, I remember making lifelong friends at this law school, and I am so proud of that. And I'm going to call them when I get out of here and ask them if they watch the live stream. <laughs> the, I'm so proud that because I went to St. Louis U, I could become a licensed lawyer. I, I'll put my pride up against the dean's pride in being a lawyer any day. I am so proud to be a lawyer. And my hope for you guys, well, before I get to that, let me just tell you, uh, uh, the pride here, your family, your friends. I sat there in 1993 and my late mother and father were there and they were so proud. Uh, and, and I hope that you take all this in because it's so important. And my hope for you today is that along the way, in, during this experience, you've made at least one friend at this law school that you intend to keep. Not just an associate, that you made a friend. I hope you have good memories and stories that you can tell. I got some doozies, you know? I hope that you all have that. 
I hope that you are proud that you graduated from SLU Law School, and I hope in 10 years that you still feel that way. I hope you feel that way in 20 years, in 30 years, in 40 years. Now here's the legacy part. I hope that you are proud to be a lawyer, that you value our profession, because not everyone in it does. I hope you leave our profession better than it was when you found it. I hope you build it up and not tear it down. That's what I mean when I say legacy. Okay, now here's the fourth grade teacher in me coming out. Let's review. <laughs> Humility. Your client's needs before your own. Community. A good legal and personal reputation. Legacy. Leave our profession better when you leave it than when you came into it. Humility, community, legacy. Thank you for listening, and let's go blues. Thank you so much, Judge. Uh, you really have had a, a very distinguished career, you represent SLU Law so very well, and you truly are a man of service for and with others. Thank you for your service, and thank you for your words today. Graduates, law school is difficult. I, I know you know that already, uh, but I think it, it bears repeating. It's exhausting. At times, it can be disheartening. At other times, it can be absolutely exhilarating, but it's never easy. And of course, that's by design, right? It's supposed to be difficult. The practice of law is difficult. After all, there's a great deal that's at stake. Your clients will be counting on you. So we make it challenging. But it isn't just the law student who navigates the pressures of law school. With us today are your family, your dear friends, your loved ones, spouses, partners, companions, parents and grandparents, children, other family members, and other dear friends. All who are here with us today have supported you financially, emotionally, by keeping you grounded. My wife did an excellent job of making sure that my head did not grow throughout law school, and I was grateful for it then, I'm grateful for it now by keeping you motivated, by giving you a deep sense of purpose, and in numerous other ways. My hunch is that you appreciate all the support and encouragement you've been given to help you reach this point. Now is your opportunity to recognize their support for you. I now invite Father Collins to offer the benediction. Again, just a word of gratitude and thanks. And, and what I'd like to invite you to do, especially graduates, is just to take a, a slight moment here and savor this moment of celebration. Savor this community that you have been a part of. Anticipate that community that you will be joining. And maybe even consider and imagine those clients that you will have, those people who will come to you with their, with their difficulties, those who do seek justice. You don't even know any of them yet, and yet they will be relying upon you. And so we invite you to take a moment to, to anticipate those needs that will meet you, and also to savor and deepen in your own mind and in your own heart the gifts that have been given to you and that have been cultivated during this time at SLU Law. So Lord, we ask you to pour out your spirit upon these graduates. Let them know the gifts that they have been given and have cultivated. Help them always to be humble and grateful and generous 
in service of your people, especially those who are most vulnerable. Lay out a path before all of them that they might excel in using these gifts in building a more just and humane world and society. And we pray all this in your name. Amen. Well, our hooding ceremony now draws to a close to be continued at university commencement on Saturday morning, mindful of Anders Walker's admonition. Um, we will have a formal recessional of the stage party and then the graduates. I ask the members of the audience to please remain at your places until the recessional is complete. Graduates, we wish you the very best in your personal and professional lives. We are going to miss you. We hope that you will visit us and remain part of the community returning often. I wish you success in finding mentors to complete your journey into our shared profession and that you in turn will give back by mentoring those who follow you. As we leave here today, your classmates in some instances will become your colleagues and in some will become opposing counsel, whether in business counseling or in the criminal justice system, in contract negotiations, in public service or in private dispute resolution. Even while you represent your clients zealously, always treat each other with the same civility, decency, and respect that you've consistently demonstrated here, even when it's hard. In fact, especially when it's hard, because that's when it matters the most. Set the slew example. You'll be glad you did, and the profession will be better for it. Now, as we close, graduates, humor me if you will. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes for just a moment. If you're game, let a smile form on your lips and consider this. You just graduated from law school. That's a big deal. We are very proud of you. Cannot wait to see what you accomplish tomorrow. Congratulations. Mm -hmm.